Okay, good morning, good afternoon, guys. I hope all of you had a lovely weekend and that uh, you relaxed and you're ready for the next week. Okay, um, today we're going to subject, object, and the verbs of sentences. Now, I told you last week that we are going to do a test on Monday or next week. Uh, we are going to test on Monday. So I just thought I would let you know this is what we're going to be testing on. We're going to do a reading comprehension and then we're going to do the prefix and suffix, um, the verbs, subjects and objects of sentences, uh, adverbs, nouns and punctuation. Now today we're going to do verbs, subjects and objects. We will see how far we get with that, otherwise we will continue tomorrow. and then we'll do the rest during the week we'll do some revision during the week just so you know exactly what you need to know and then also the reading comprehension what you can expect from me and how i ask questions so today we're going to do the verbs subjects and objects of sentences so rules stay the same <laughs> i hope you participate if you don't feel like participating, putting up your hands and talking to me, please participate in the chat. There are some things I'm going to ask you to put in the chat for me. Um, the irregular verbs I'm going to ask you to put in the, tap, uh, in the chat for me. So, okay. So the first thing I want you to know about subjects, objects and verbs in sentences. The basic part of a sentence are the subject and the verb. The subject is normally a noun, a word that names a person, place or thing. The verb usually follows the subject and identifies an action or a state of being. The object is a thing that the verb is being done to. Okay, so that, are, that is a subject, object of, and verbs of sentences. Now, the first thing, the verbs. A verb is a word which describes the action in a sentence. So it's the doing word. It's an action word. All of you know exactly what a verb is. We've been doing this since you were grade one. A verb is an action word. So here are a few ex examples. I play soccer. Play is the verb. It's the thing that's being done. They skip quickly. We eat spaghetti. Bob is seven today. So skip is the verb. Eat is the verb. Is is the verb. It's what's being done. Now the next thing we are going to do is the irregular verb. Irregular verb is when you change the verb into past tense, but you don't put an ed after the word. You change the entire word. Okay, so that is what a irregular verb is. It is when you change something to the past tense, when you change a verb to the past tense, but you change the entire word. You don't just put an ed at the back. Like I have an example here, a good example. Um, when you say, I go to the shop, and yesterday I went to the shop. That is what a irregular verb is. We're going to do that. Now I'm going to give you a few examples, but first things first, let's do this exercise together. Verbs, so underline the verb in the sentence. We run to the store. Anybody want to identify the verb in the first sentence? The first sentence is run. Yes, that's correct. Uh, the second one, I believe every person is here. Which one is the verb? Remember, it's the word that it's the action, the thing that's being that's happening at the moment. The second sentence is okay, 
no. The second sen sentence is, I believe. So believe is the verb. It's something that's being done. It's an action. So they believe. When you say, I believe every person is here, here is just where that is. It's not something that's being done. Okay. So um, please hope for the best. Hope is the action. It's the thing that's happening. Okay. She walks to the bus stop. Anyone want to answer that one for me? She walks to the bus stop. Walks is the verb in that sentence. They watch the TV. Anyone want to try that one? Give me the verb of that sentence. Yes, watch is the verb in that sentence. Okay, the next one, they ate my lunch. Eight, yes, that's correct. I go to the shop. I go to the shop. Yes, that's correct. Go. Now, they went to the stadium. They went to the stadium. Yes, went is the correct verb. And I rode my bike. Rode is the verb. It's the action that's being done. We sleep in the house. We sleep in the house. Yes, sleep is the, is the verb. Now, guys, the next one is the irregular verbs. Irregular verbs is not something you can understand. Irregular verbs is one of the few things in English that you can't understand. It's something you need to learn. It's just this word becomes that word when you put it in past things. Now, what I want you to do if all of you or most of you can just try and help me here, I want you to write the irregular verb of each of the, these words in the chat box. A very important thing about irregular verbs is the spelling. And then remember, every time you, we, we write in English, spelling always counts. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the first one for you. B becomes was or were. B becomes was or were. Anybody else? You can do anyone you like, like you want them to do. So, bend. I bend my straw. And yesterday, I wiped my straw. Yesterday, I bent my straw. That is the past tense. Okay. Irregular verbs are basically the past tense of the verb. Okay. Irregular verbs are the past tense of the word, uh, of the verb, verb. Sorry, guys. Um, irregular verbs are the past tense of the verb. So, the only thing is, it's not past tense that you just put an ed after. That's why we try and learn irregular verbs. So that is the only thing like choose. I choose you. Yesterday, I chose you. Okay, that is a regular verb. It's just putting something in the past tense when a ver word changes. But the next one, I cut my finger today. Yesterday, I wet my finger. Anybody wants to try that one? Sometimes when we talk about a regular verb, it's the same. Yes, that is correct. Cut. Yesterday, I cut my finger. Okay. Today, I do my homework. Yesterday, I did my homework. 
Yes. Okay. I draw a picture today. Yesterday I drew a picture. Yes. Okay. Today I fly my kite. Yesterday I flew my kite. Yes. Today I forget. Yesterday I forgot. Today I forgive you. Yesterday I forgave you. Yes. I hold your hand. Yesterday I held your hand. Yes, that's correct. Today I drive my car. Yesterday I drove my car. Today I drink milk. Yesterday I drank milk. Today I eat cereal. Yesterday I I ate cereal. Yes. Today I feel tired. Yesterday I felt tired. Yes. So today I Fight with my brother. Yesterday I Yesterday I fought with my brother. So today I find my glasses. Yesterday I Yesterday I Found my glasses. Yes. Today I freeze. Yesterday I froze. That's correct. Today I give my answers. Yesterday I gave my answers. Today I go to the shop. Yesterday I went to the shop. Yes. Today I grow tomatoes. Yesterday I grew tomatoes. Okay. Any questions regarding irregular verbs? These irregular verbs are the only irregular verbs I will ask you for Monday's test. I won't ask you any other any other irregular verbs for Monday's test. Like I said. This is just something you learn. It's not something to understand. It's not something to um, figure out. It's just something you learn. These words, you just learn them. Okay. Now, the next one. What is the subject of a sentence? A subject is the part of a sentence that contains the personal thing performing the action in a sentence. Okay. So it's the thing in the sentence or the person in the sentence that is doing the thing. Okay, so when I ask you, um, my examples are the coat looks expensive. So the coat is the thing, is the subject that is doing the thing. Shirley has a big dog. Shirley is the subject. She has the big dog. Ken knows the, know the answer. So Ken is the subject. He is the one doing the action. Okay. Now the hint. When we are looking for the subject in a sentence, find the action word. Find the, search for the action word in the sentence. Search for the verb. And then ask yourself who or what. So um, the first one, who or what verb looks expensive? So then you immediately know the coat. That is the subject. Because when you ask yourself who or what, then you will see who or what looks expensive. Then you will see the coat looks expensive. Or who or what has a big dog? Immediately you know 
Shirley has the big dog, so Shirley must be the subject. That is how we identify a subject in a sentence. Okay. Any questions regarding subject? Now, a uh, little no, a little fact about the subject. Sometimes a sentence doesn't have a subject. Okay, let's underline the subjects in these sentences. Okay. We run to the store. We run to the store. Yes, we is the subject. I believe every person is here. Yes, I is the subject. Jake hopes for the best. What is the subject there? Yes, Jake is the subject. She walks to the bus stop. What is the subject there? She is the subject. They watch the TV. Yes, they. Okay, they ate my lunch. Again, it's they is the subject. I go to the shop. I go to the shop. Yes, I is the subject. Now, they went to the stadium. They went to the stadium. Yes, it's they. That girl rode my bike. Yes, that girl. We went to sleep. We went to sleep. Yes. Again, so the next part of a sentence is the object of the sentence. It's normally located after the verb. It answers the question who or what received the action of the verb. So who or what received the action of the verb? He gave me an apple. If you go and ask yourself, okay, he is the subject, gave is the verb. Whom or what received uh, the action? An apple. The same with Jack caught a fish. Jack is the subject. The verb is caught. But what or who received the caught action? The fish. The fish. And our cat caught a mouse. Cat is the subject. Caught is the verb, and a mouse is the thing that the verb is being done to. So the object in the sentence is the thing the verb is being done to. So our cat caught a mouse. Now the next one. Object. Underline the object in the sentence. Underline the object in the sentence. We run to the store. Yes, the store is the object. The next one. I believe in hope. I believe in hope. Yes, hope is the object. Jake hopes for the best. Yes, best is the object. It's the thing that the action is being done to, so the best. Okay, she walks to the bus bus stop. She walks to the bus stop. Bus stop is the object. They watch the TV. They watch the TV. Yes, TV is the object. They ate my lunch. They ate my lunch. Yes, lunch is the object. Ate is the verb. Lunch is the object. Okay. I go to the shop. Shop is the object. They went to the stadium. They went to the stadium. Yes, stadium is the object. 
Okay, the next one. That girl rode my bike. Bike is the object. We sleep in the house. House is the object. Okay. Any questions regarding the object of a sentence? Any question? Nothing. Okay. Uh, now, this is the most important slide of the entire day. This slide will just give you everything in one go. Okay, let me just answer here. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, I just wanted to ask, um, can a sentence not have a, a object in? Sometimes a sentence can have a, a, um, can't have an object. It is possible. We're going to do a few examples and then you will see exactly what I mean. Thank you, ma'am. The pleasure. Okay, so um, let me just see there. Okay, the subject it's who or what performs the action of the verb. Who or what performs the action of the verb? It can be a person or a thing that performs the action of the verb. Um, you will see uh, you will see that in one of the other in one of the exercises there is a sentence that says staring at the sun hurts my eyes or something like that staring looks like the verb but it's not it's the subject because it's the, the action um it's what it's what is being done to the verb the verb is hurts okay a sentence is not complete without a verb that is correct but sometimes a sentence it doesn't need to have a subject and it doesn't need to have an object complete sentence. Okay, um, I see here, Ntandu says she couldn't uh, attend last Friday because of load shedding. Guys, if you're not able to attend because of something like load shedding, it's fine. We will, I'm going to do, I'm going to recap everything I did last week, this week, because that's the only thing things I'm going to do the test on is the things I did with you or I'm going to do with you. Okay. Like uh, nouns, adverbs, prefixes, suffixes, subject and verbs and objects. Um, so I know that I did it with you. So it's something you did. Okay. Then a verb is the verb is the word that, that expresses what the action is. The verb is the word that expresses what the action is okay so it's the doing word it's an action word a verb is an, the easy one to identify and the object is whoever or whatever received the action is the object so whoever or whatever received the action is the object okay So um, here are a few exercises we are going to do together. Please, if you want to answer me, uh, put up your hand. I want you to do the entire sentence. Like I want you to identify the subject in the sentence, the object in the sentence, and the verb in the sentence. Okay. Anybody want to try the first one for me? Okay, I'm going to do the first one. So the subject of this sentence is we. We went, that is a verb, and the object is the path. So we is a subject. It's the thing that's doing the verb. Went is the verb. It's the action being done and to the park is the object. The object is the park. Okay. Ma'am, can you yes. hear you? Yes, I can hear you. I is the subject. Sang 
is the verb and song is the object. That is correct. Thank you so much. Okay. Now the next one, Mark and I play basketball at the park. Mark and I played basketball at the park. Okay. Mark is the subject. Played is the verb. And basketball is the object. Now, sometimes a sentence can have more than one verb, more than one subject, more than one object. Okay, it's possible. So, um, the first one I did, Mark and I played basketball at the park. Mark and I are both the subjects. Okay. Basketball and park are both the objects. Okay, played is the verb, it stays the verb. Um, now the next one, she ordered a hamburger and fries. She ordered a hamburger and fries. Anybody wants to do that one for me? Okay, she is the subject, ordered is the verb, and hamburger and fries are both the, hamburger and fries are both the object. Okay. So um, the next one, Sally want to eat pizza. Which one is the verb? Okay. Sally is the subject, is the one that's doing the thing. Eat is the verb, it's the action that's being done. And pizza is is, and pizza is the object. Okay. Now the next one is a tricky one. Reading and learning can be fun activities. Reading and learning can be fun activities. Reading and learning is the subject. I know it looks like a, a verb, but reading and learning is the subject. Fun is the verb. And activities is, yes, and activities is the object. So the next one, driving is dangerous at night. Driving is dangerous at night. Okay, the next one, I read a book and ate a box of chocolates. I read a book and Ate a box of chocolates. The subject is I. The verbs are ate and read. And the object is book and chocolate. The next one is reading is the subject. Opens is the 
verb. It's the thing that's being done. And doors and world is the object of the sentence. Now the next one is sometimes there are more than one object, more than one subject, more than one verb in a sentence. So uh, this is a perfect example of one. These are a perfect example of how you can see that. Okay, so Mark, John, Mark, Jacob, and Luke, those are the subjects. Eight is the verbs, and waffles are the, the object. I'm going to, I see you want to, uh, you ask me to explain this again. Okay, I'm going to go back to this slide. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I know these are confusing. We are going to do a lot of exercises. This specific uh, thing we are going to do again tomorrow because it's confusing. It's difficult. I have a lot of exercises. I think I have four or five slides just with exercises on them because it's confusing. So the next one we are going to do again. Remember when I told you that um, the number 17 is the one, I want you to look at number 17 here, is the one I told you about that is very interesting that you can see it like this. Because sometimes you feel like staring is a verb because it's a doing word. But in this specific sentence, when you ask, okay, when you ask who or what, performs the action of the verb. Then you will see it's staring. That staring is who or what performs. Okay. At the sun may hurt. So hurt is your verb. And whoever or whatever receives the action, it's your eyes. So your eyes are going to, is going to receive the action. I know this is a little bit difficult and it's a little confusing because sometimes a word looks like a, a verb and sometimes it looks like a subject and sometimes it looks like an object, but it's not. Okay. That is why we are going to do exercises and it's begin, it will begin to become clearer, clearer and clearer to you um, the more we do it. That's why we are really going to do a lot of exercises because it's difficult and because it's confusing. So maybe you will see, uh, no, not maybe, um, at the end of all the exercises we do and more also. And tomorrow also, we are going to do this again. We are going to explain this again. Okay. I'm going to begin at number 11 now, where Luke ate waffles, bacon, toast, and potatoes. Okay. That's where we are. I'm going to begin the exercise. Okay, so when I ask you, what is the verb? What is the verb in the first sentence? Luke ate waffles. Luke ate waffles. Okay, so eight is the verb. Eight is the verb. So when I ask you, okay, um, what or who performs the action? What or who perf uh, performs the action? Then you can say, okay, so Luke, eight, Luke is the subject. Eight is the verb, and then the object of everything or whatever receives the action. So what receives the action eight? 
it's going to be the waffles, bacon, toast, and potatoes. Um, I know you feel sometimes the verbs are easy, and normally they are, but sometimes they are confusing. So now the next one is what is the subject of the sentence? What is the subject of the next sentence? It's going to be Tim. Okay. So Tim, what is Tim doing? Tim dusted, swept, and washed. And what received this action that Tim did? The floors. Okay. I know it's tricky, but we are going to do this again and again till I think everybody is comfortable. Okay. So the subject of the next sentence is. The subject is, remember, it's the person or the thing who does the verb. It's the, it's the people. Okay. So Doug and Dave, those two are the subjects of the sentence. What is the verbs of that sentence? It's washed and waxed. Those are the verbs. Those are the two things that's being done. Washed and waxed. And what it's being done to? The car. Okay, so the next one. He and I rake the leaves and mowed the lawn. He and I rake the leaves and mowed the lawn. So the subject is he and I, both of us. So both of us is people or the stuff that performs the action. Me and him, both of us are going to perform the action. Okay, now the action we did is we rate. And what did we, what did we rake? We rake the leaves. We raked the leaves. So rake is the verb and the leaves are the objects. But mode in that sentence is also a verb. It's also an action that's taking place. It's also something he and I did. We mode. And what did we mow, we mowed the lawn, which is the object. Okay, so sometimes a, a sentence looks like this, and there are two objects, two subjects, and two uh, verbs in a sentence. Okay, now the next one my mom. Mom is the subject, it's the person who performs the verb. So, mom. Told, which is the verb of the sentence. Me, it's the thing or the person that the action is being done to. So my mom told me. Do you understand why that one is my mom told me? Do you understand why that is like that? Why the mom is the subject told the the verb and me the object do you understand that okay i'm going to continue dog is also a subject it's the subject in the next sentence and park is the object okay okay so the next sentence is I is the subject. I is the subject. What did I do? I wrote, and the thing that the action is being done to is my bike. 
while she is a different subject, ran the down the street. Okay, I just want to find out something. All of you that's, yeah, please, if you are with me and you understand what I'm saying, please raise your hand. Please just tell me, okay, I'm with you. I understand, I'm with you. If you are not with me, message me privately so i can okay i have two people here that raises their hand or tell me that they are with me um i did the exact not the exact same but almost the exact same thing to the grade six class and there were a lot of people that were struggling with identifying the subject, the object, and the verb. The verbs were easier, but there were a lot of people that were struggling. So it's not, um, if you're struggling with this, we are, like I said, we're going to do it again and again and again till you get it, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna do the next one. Staring at the sun may hurt your eyes. So, like I said, staring is the subject. It's the thing or the person that performs the action of the verb. May hurt. That is the action. That's the thing that's taking place. It's a hurt in your eyes. And the thing that the action is being done to is your eyes. All of you have that. Do you get that? Because sometimes the verb looks or like staring, it looks like a verb, but in reality, it's a subject. Okay, now red triangles and squares both have four sides. Okay, red triangles and squares are both the subjects have, it's something they do. They have, it's the verb, and four sides, that is the object. Okay, baseball, football, both the subjects are, which is the verb, and the object is the thing that it's being done to, is sports. Grades are, Grades is a subject, R is a verb, and test and assignments. Okay, so guys, this is the second slide of my exercises, and our time is almost finished. Um, please, if you don't know what I try to explain to you today, please send me a, a chat privately. You can send it privately. If you're struggling with something. Um, I just want to know if you're with me. We, are, we will do the rest of the exercises tomorrow because, like I said, <laughs> there are still, I think, four slides after this one with exercises. Um, I'm going to go back to that slide that says what we are going to write test about on next Monday. Like I said, you're going to write English on Monday and the test will be available at 12. So then we can do the test. Uh, let me just go back to that slide. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. And the regular verbs we will do also tomorrow again. Okay. So testing is going to be done. The reading comprehension. We will do the reading comprehension. I will give you an example of reading comprehension tomorrow after the rest of this exercises because you need to know how i ask questions and what type of um, what type of text you can expect from me for the test okay then prefix and suffix we're going to do on friday again we did that last friday 
So um, we are going to do the prefix and the suffix on Friday again. Um, I have a, a little <laughs> surprise for you with that one. Verb subjects and objects we did today. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Adverbs and nouns we're going to do on Wednesday. And Thursday we're going to do punctuation. If you have any questions for me, please ask. Please, um, I want to help you. And then thank you for joining today. I'm sorry <laughs> that um, we didn't finish this PowerPoint presentation, but we will finish it tomorrow and then I will do the reading comprehension also. So thank you for joining and we will see you, I will see you again tomorrow and I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Okay, thanks guys.